Well, the Mark 5 fleet is a really big change for our customers. It's a true intercity train with end doors and a really comfortable saloon space. Uh, there's some really important features for customers like more luggage space and extremely comfortable legroom. And there's also a great view out of the window. Extensive research was done to support First Group's bid for TransPennine that helped inform us what type of trains we needed. Customers on TransPennine said they really wanted to see trains that gave them an experience like travelling on a big train, that perhaps down to London that they'd experience. So end doors, lots of space for uh, luggage, comfortable seating areas, really improving, taking a step change, moving from perhaps a more suburban type journey into true long distance into city journeys. A few factors were, were in the uh, decision making. One of the most critical was the need to bring in additional capacity to the franchise as quickly as possible. And through the Nova Free project, working with CAF and DRS, we've been able to come up with a uh, intercity train set concept that's been able to be rolled out really quickly to really get that improvement in quality and capacity really quickly. We then move through and we look into our Nova 2 fleet, the Class 397 EMU for Scotland, and we see that as a breakthrough in what uh, the market is able to offer in terms of uh, the intercity products. We're really confident in what CAF are producing and they're able to offer a really competitive new offer and I think that will be really interesting to see how that develops in the wider UK market. But it was also really important for us to have 125 mile per hour capability with a bi-mode train for our services on the East Coast Main Line, which is an increasingly congested part of the network. So we needed a train that was able to uh, keep up with the fastest trains on that route between Newcastle and York, but also be able to use the non-electrified lines between York and Manchester to offer that new intercity service. So a complicated question, but we think by bringing those three fleets together, we're going to be able to offer a really compelling offer to our customers. We're here at the Vellum Test Track. Um, it's really good for us because it gives us uh, an opportunity to try things out in different ways and certainly starting with the basics of making sure the train stops so the brakes are really important and uh, actually being able to do it in a very controlled environment, very safe and we don't have to disrupt say the, the network if we try to do this back in the UK. Mark 5A, they are definitely a, a local hauled, but very much the, the actual coaches themselves are fixed like a unit. They have fixed bar couplers, the gangways are bolted, so the sort of traditional take coaches, put coaches in overnight at any depot. It's not the same with this, it's much more like the, the coaches bit is like a unit, so it's a hybrid really. We have a, a formation where at one end we have a, a driving trailer, so it enables us to operate the train push-pull. So we can have the locomotive fixed at one end and we can drive the train in either direction without having to run round, which is really good um, from a flexibility point of view. But we have a, an extra uh, driver trailer, a 14th one on top of our 13 rakes of coaches because there may be that unfortunate day, either it unfortunately has an accident or there's a major technical failure which keeps the vehicle out for a long time. So having a spare means we will be able to get the train back into service you know, within, uh, if not the next day, within a very few days. We've modified uh, the base Class 68 locomotive to work push-pull with these specific coaches. The specification is make the driving trailer look like a modified Class 68. So in some ways that gave us a bit of a constraint um, because the fundamentals of the, the, the cab desk remain unchanged in terms of the position of the power brake controllers and the horns and etc. But the modifications we've been able to work and do those changes uh, quite straightforward um, and again supportive work from both CAF and Stadler as the manufacturer of the locomotive to make that happen but the key thing is very much to keep the two that you from a driving point of view in some ways you wouldn't know which end you were uh, you were at. We'll be here for quite a number of more weeks quite a lot of tests to do because really we want to get all our tests as many of the tests we can out of the way so actually when we bring the trains to the UK um, there's very little to be done but uh, unit 2 will be shortly on its way to Manchester and unit 3 uh, won't be that far behind uh, and so we should see uh, Mark 5A coaches running in the UK on, uh, on tests but we're doing shakedown runs uh, this summer uh, and we're looking forward to introduction this autumn with the, with the start of the fleet. These trains will be deployed on our routes from the northwest, Manchester Airport or Liverpool, across to destinations in Yorkshire and the northeast like Middlesbrough and Scarborough. They're the first fleet to be rolled out across the next year by the end of 2019 all of our core routes between the principal cities of the north and scotland will be served by new intercity trains our nova fleet there's two key growth areas for us firstly where there's a choice of rail operators perhaps for example between leeds and newcastle we really want 
customers to go and choose us based on the quality of our service and the trains are a really important part of that. But we also want to attract people out of their cars and we see the standards that there are in terms of design and functionality in a modern car and we're really trying to match those standards so people think I'll take the train, it's going to be a great experience. We're bringing these new trains into traffic during the autumn with uh, a full rollout of service by the end of the year.